adoration, recognizing that all that we have seen is the hand of God at work. Give him glory, give him praise, give him honor, give him adoration, give him all the praise that is due unto his name. Celebrate him, our God is faithful, is worthy to be praised, is worthy to be glorified, is worthy to be praised, and is worthy to be glorified. Let your voice of gratitude be heard on high this morning as you give him glory and honor, as you give him adoration and thanksgiving. Celebrate him. Jesus, we have come today to say that we are thankful, to say that we are grateful, to glorify your holy name, to celebrate your faithfulness. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Thank him also for the answers to our prayers that we have not prayed in vain, but that God has heard us, and because he has heard us, he has answered us. For this is the confidence that we have, if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we are sure that he has granted our petitions. Will you give him the glory and the honor? Will you celebrate him this morning? And now begin to ask him to speak to you today. All the people gathered early in the morning for to hear him. Lord, we have come to hear you this morning. Speak directly to me today. Let your word come forth and let it transform my life. Thank you, Father, and thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for the blessing of being in your presence. We thank you for the testimonies you have wrought in our midst. And we thank you, Lord, for the answers to prayers you have given us today. And Lord, our eyes are upon you this morning, asking that you will speak to us, and that your word will change and transform us again in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand, and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. This morning, as we begin looking at God's word, it's important that we are reminded that according to scriptural demand, we must continue to take up the names of our new converts in prayers so as to secure their establishment in the faith. Paul the Apostle lays up an example for us in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 8 and verse 9 in particular. It says, For I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And verse 9, it says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without season I make mention of you always in my prayers. It is important for us to understand that we have a responsibility to travel over the soul of every convert that God has given to us in order to have Christ fully formed in them. In Galatians 4 and verse 19, Paul speaking there again says, My little children, whom I travel again in birth until Christ is formed in you. So there is a demand for travail. Travail refers to passionate prayer. So we must recognize that we must engage the altar of prayer. And that means that we must have a warfare mentality when it comes to soul winning. And that is why our caption for this week in our exhortation is soul winning is warfare. Soul winning is warfare. You need a warfare mentality to be effective in soul winning. It's important to note this morning, as the caption states, that soul winning is not a play fair, but rather it is warfare. In Luke chapter 11, we are told, verse 21 and verse 22, it said, When a strong man armed keepeth his goods, his goods are at peace. But when a stronger one than he comes upon him, he will take away the arm in which he trusted, and then he will spoil his goods. We must recognize that every soul that is held captive is held captive by the devil. And we must engage spiritual violence in order to set them free from the captivity of hell. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, the Bible makes us to understand this very clearly. It says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, 
It said, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent taketh it by force. So according to scripture, there is a requirement for spiritual violence. If you look at the episode that took place in the book of Luke chapter 14, the Bible says that a man made a feast and he sent out his servants to, to call those that were invited to the feast. And look at verse 18, the beginning of verse 18 very closely. The Bible tells us there, it said, And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. All of them, with one consent, began to make excuse. Not that they had a conference, but there was a satanic agenda to stop them from coming. They all, with one consent, began to make excuse. Their excuses were different, but the purpose was the same, to stop them from being in that feast. That is what occurs for every, every time we go out there on the harvest field. The enemy is seeking one purpose and one purpose alone, to stop souls from coming to the feast. And that is why we must engage in spiritual warfare. The Bible makes us to understand in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. It tells us there, it said, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. It said, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. God, the God of this world has blinded them. He has put something upon them, not allowing them to be able to see the light. You see, it's one thing to have the light present. It's another thing to be able to see the light. The Bible tells us that for anyone to be able to see it in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, it says, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, it says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So clearly, for anyone to see the face must be open. If you look earlier in this same portion of scripture, in the book of 2 Corinthians 13, we are told there, beginning from verse 16, he said, but when they turned to the Lord, he said that the veil shall be taken away. So everyone that actually turns to God does so because the blindfolding force of the enemy has been taken away. If not, no matter the explanation, they will not understand the gospel. That is why we must engage on the altar of prayer to prevail against every satanic resistance to our engagement on the harvest field. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 1 all the way down to verse 6. We see Jesus sending forth his disciples here. And he says he called the twelve together and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And the Bible says, He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It's amazing that the first thing the Bible tells us in that verse 1 is that He gave them power and authority over all devils. Their task was to go and preach and to heal, but before they would be effective in it, He said He had to give them power over all devils. Why? Because the devil's principal aim is to stop their access to the gospel. He said, go and preach the gospel, but before you go, make sure that you are empowered over all devils. You see, every time we are out there on the go for Christ, must understand that there are satanic resistances there. In the book of Acts chapter 13, beginning from verse 8, we are told, verse 8 down to verse 11, down to verse 13, he said, but Elimas the sorcerer, he said, for so is his name by interpretation. He withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. He says, and then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes upon him. And he said, O thou fool of sub subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, he said, an enemy of all righteousness, will that not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He said, and now the hand of the Lord is upon thee, that thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately they fell in the midst of him, and he went about seeking one that will lead him by the hand. Look at that. I'm sure many of us have had similar experiences. You're on the harvest field, there are about three or four people together. You are speaking, and then there is one who is listening. 
or two who are listening. And then there is one delivers the sorcerer among them who is trying to dissuade them, trying to confuse them, trying to pervert them, trying to distract them from the gospel that you are there to preach. Why? Because they are planted by the enemy as satanic resistances. You see, every time we are on the harvest field, don't take anything for, for granted. Many times you find individuals who are right there on the harvest field as antagonists to the gospel that you are there to preach. Because they are planted there by the enemy. They are satanic agents. Here comes Paul the apostle preaching to this deputy. And the man is standing there and the major duty he has there is to resist everything that they are saying. To counter every word that they are speaking. And that is why you and I must recognize that it is warfare that we are engaged in. And when we have that mentality, then we are able to win the battle. I see each one of us winning this battle in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. I said, I see each one of us winning this battle in the name of Jesus Christ. I see each one of us winning this battle in the name of Jesus Christ. I see each one of us winning this battle in the name of Jesus. This is very important. We must understand that it is warfare. Every aspect of soul winning, from the ministration to the follow-up to the bringing of the souls to church, every aspect of it is warfare. And the warfare is spiritual. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, we are told there, he said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It is warfare. It is warfare. When you approach it with a warfare mentality, you are able to win the victory. May each one of us today be in grace to win this victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Every soul that God has given to you and to me, none of them shall be lost. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. I remember a day that we were standing in prayer and praying for the church intensely. And a man who was living around the church environment, he came and the church, the church where, you know, the, the location where the church where the church was used to be a school and the man attended school in that place and was still living in the same community as at that time the church has been there for almost four years and he was living in the same community he said as he was passing the church that day suddenly something told him you need to go to that place tomorrow he was passing on saturday and we're praying on Saturday. And he said, somebody told him, he said, you need to go to that place tomorrow. When he entered into the church, he said, that is the first time he will know there's a church there. Living in the same community, where he attended school inside that same compound. And living in the same place. And four years after the church was in that community, is the first time he will know there's a church there. Because Satan blindfolded him. You see, we must understand that we are engaged in battle. When we approach it from that mentality, we're able to take hold of the victory. My prayer is that for each one of us who will stand as warriors for Jesus, and we're going to win the victory on his behalf. Will you rise on your feet this morning and ask God for grace? Lord, I take that winning grace, that grace of a winning soldier to fight this battle and to win it in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Lord, I receive grace this morning. Lord, I receive grace this morning. Lord, I receive grace this morning. To engage as a soldier, as a warrior for Jesus and to win the battle i receive that grace i receive that grace why not begin to speak to god about everyone god has brought your way lord we decree right now for every soul that you have given to us the enemy shall not prevail the enemy shall not prevail every voice of confusion will bring them to silence 
every voice of manipulation we bring them to, to silence every confusing thought we bring them to silence in the name of jesus christ lift your voice he said we should cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and to bring to captivity every thought lord we decree every contrary thought to the gospel let them be brought to silence in the name of jesus let them be brought to silence in the name of jesus let them be brought to silence in the name of jesus we decree absolute and total victory absolute and total victory over every satanic ploy in the name of jesus christ absolute and total victory over every satanic ploy in the name of jesus christ lift your hand and lift your voice and give glory to god now father thank you for it and blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe say loud amen. amen from what we have heard this morning take your time engage on the altar of prayer concerning every single soul god has brought away paul said i'm making mention of you in my prayers make mention of them and watch what god begins to do every one of them will begin to respond swiftly in the name of jesus a brand new day gives you a brand new opportunity therefore speak to the day and decree what must be delivered today 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 you shall decree a thing it shall be established make your decrees make your decrees this morning make your decree this morning let your voice be heard on high speak right now decree the day is blessed the day is loaded it shall be a testimony day it shall be a breakthrough day it shall be an open heavens day in the name of jesus day of revelation day of transformation day of productivity supernatural day of favor in the name of jesus christ lift your hand and give thanks to god father thank you and blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed in jesus precious name we have prayed according to your decree so shall it be in jesus name amen and amen be reminded a word of faith bible institute kicks off today both in kenya land and across the various provinces we have the l the um, bcc course and ldc course taking place it will be a glorious time in jesus name get your converts and all who are concerned to be there those who have not yet attended make sure you take advantage of it and the lord bless you as you do in the name of jesus let us share the goodness of the lord together in fellowship surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever amen peace it is my year of breaking limits then what eyes have not seen or ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020 congratulations amen and amen congratulate somebody as you go be blessed